gentlemen, long time no see, Divagant here on my somewhat tutorial on Volvamer Editor 3.4, this is for Half-Life 1, and today I'm going to teach you about the change level entity, which is used to, to change from map 1 to map 2 while in the Half-Life mod campaign. This entity has no purpose on games like Counter-Strike or Day of Defeat because the, the games for example in Counter Strike occur within the same map. You don't have to change map. Even if the map is somehow a little big, it doesn't have any logic to change the map while in game. While in Half Life mods uh, you have a campaign since it's single player or cooperative. And in order not to have a huge map, you separate the map into logic pieces and connect those pieces within the change level entities. So, uh, to start up, uh, you'll need two maps, which I already I have already done. I made in this case two maps that fit one another, and my armor for some reason in, here we go that connect. Notice that this corridor is exactly the same for the two maps. But then, in the first map, you only have the first room and not the second, and it's reversed on the second case. Uh, when using the change trigger, you don't have obligatory, to, it is not obligatory to have two maps that fit one another. You can make completely opposite maps that fit in the same campaign. <laughs> as long as you make it, a change trigger is used to change from one map to another map from position X on one map to position 2 in the second map and the change trigger can be one of three things a two-way thesis you can use it to change from map 1 to map 2 and again from map 2 from map 1 a single-way thesis from map 1 to map 2 only you can't go back or you can use a trigger on a change on the change level this is for example you press a button here and you are alter teletransported to another map. This is useful in campaigns that doesn't have any kind of connection within the maps, so when you complete the objectives, you trigger the change level. Uh, also, you can have multiple change levels within the same map. For example, this room could have four corridors that led to four completely different rooms, or even having the four change change level in the same map connecting to four different change maps to map 2 but notice that if I have one change level here and one change level here each one must have its own change level in the other map this is for example I'm going to glue entities like around here so I can point out uh, them as the lights something bigger can do one two and here one two for example you can't connect these two at the same time to this one you have to connect one to one and one to one I think you've, you understood what I meant so let's get started shall we just going to erase all the rubbish I did well I started up by assembling two maps that are exactly that fit in one another. Also, the lights fit. If you notice carefully, when you change map in Half-Life, sometimes the light doesn't fit, but it's very hard to make it fit because of the shadows and stuff like that. So, in uh, room one, I'm going to make a random box in the middle of it so we can distinguish it from room two. Box which faces I don't even need to edit. Uh, and in room 2 I'm going to make something different what? something different uh, something stupid uh, yeah, no, <laughs> a cube that says no smoking on this area because on room 2 it is forbidden to smoke just going to leave it here or something. I'm going to glue it to the wall. 
going to just fit and I think it's pretty different enough remembering one property notice the letters are upside down because this is aligned to the world and if I align to the place the letters go right sometimes for example indoors since it's the same block you'll probably need to use two different textures you can't do this on the same uh, brick let's call it like that so we got all we need let's start on map 1 well uh, what I want is when the player goes like this, moving like this, he is going to hit an invisible wall, uh, an invisible wall that is going to transport him to the next map. So I'm going to make the wall that's going to be invisible, and when you hit it, boom, different map. Also, you are going to need an entity called Info Landmark which is somewhere here I'm going to put it here Okay. notice the, the distance towards the light the wall is 2 units distant from the light and the landmark is 2 units distant from the light this is on purpose I'll explain you in a bit so uh, I named my map 1 change level 1 and my map 2 change level 2 and now I'm going to do the opposite on change level 2. I'm going to put on the other side a change level and at the same distance I'm going to put the landmark. Okay, I'm going to leave them face to face so you can notice while I edit. Well, I'm going to call the landmark on level 1 land 1 and the landmark on level 2 land 2 now I'm going to make it a, funk, a trigger change level uh, the new map, man, new map name is this change level 2 landmark name is land 2 which is the landmark you are spawned it within the, the map too. Uh, this is needed, flex, no intermission, blah blah blah. Okay, and in map 2, exactly the opposite. So we just did a change level. Why was I noticing the distance of the light? Notice I left the light exactly on the same spot of the corridor and when you touch here you are teletransported to here which is exact, exactly the same spot on the two maps. I think you are noticing and exactly the opposite the other way around so that when you change maps you don't notice you change maps I think that that is important on a campaign mode that that, uh, the, that is, is the follow-up of maps I think that is an important characteristic uh, other characteristics of change levels um, there is no need on the second map to create a player start because the player is going to be transported to the second map all true that here on map properties these properties are loaded don't forget about this, this is important and it has all kinds of important stuff these properties are loaded and if for example you make a one-way change level um, to for example on map 2 I had this which I do I have to have and I make a player spawn here the player spawn would never be loaded also um, entities aren't persistent within the within the change level for example if I ran to the change level and I had a grant following me the grant wouldn't be transported unless he was very close to me it's hard to explain but 
I don't even know exactly how close it has to be. Uh, normally, the only thing that gets transported are scientists or monsters that are really close to you when you get transported, no matter what map you are transported to. Um, I think that's all about change levels. Well, and notice here I made a two way change level. If you, for example, you wanted to make it one way from map 1 to map 2, but then you wouldn't be able to go back, on the map 2 you just have to turn on the flag use only. When you turn on this flag, the use only, in order to this change level trigger to be to be activated, it must be triggered by something else, for example, for a button. But you have, if you have this on, and you have nothing else in the map triggering it, you can't go back. Okay. Uh, also, I've seen a couple of maps where the, the change level is glued to the landmark. What happens? For example, if I had the landmark where the light is and also this on the other map, you would spawn here. The land, the, the change trigger would also be here, but you'd when you spawn, you aren't triggered immediately because you are born within the, the trigger. That is the, the motive, for example, when you have to trigger something as soon as you spawn, it is normal to trigger to make a trigger on your feet and not the place where you spawn. Uh, so in that case, I spawned and I could just go back and see this dead end. That would be pretty stupid. Um, that was one way, and that also covered a trigger. It's not hard at all. Just have to make it use only, give it a name, and trigger it by something. Okay, let's compile the two maps. I'm going to turn that on because we added some lights. Just compile the two, and it should work. Uh, map change lev level one. Okay, this is map one. Here's the box on the first room. There's the corridor. Notice I made it so you can't see anything on the second map. And when you come here, boom, change map. And boom, my AGL just went boom. And I don't know why. That was incredibly stupid. Hmm, what's wrong? What is wrong with this map? Oh, I get it. I remember. The landmark on both maps must have the same name. I forgot to mention that. This is always tricky. I always bump on this one. Also, another thing I forgot to mention. When you change map, the direction you are taking is maintained. This is, if I run to this change level from here and I went it on my back, when I was teletransported to the second map, I would still be on my back. That's why the room is here and not turned up and or something. It has nothing to do with the change trigger itself. It's about your player. So let's compile the two again, and it won't be any trouble run. Right I hope. Also, I'm running out of time. And I'm babbling like hell, and I'm pissed off because I just make a big bump on that stuff. God damn it, I'm getting nervous. <coughs> See what I meant? This is frustrating. Okay, box, room one, this is it. Corridor, and when I bump here, loading. God damn it! Why 
What the fuck is wrong with it? What the fuck is wrong with my map? No. God damn it. That was stupid. As you can see, uh, mapping is a bit frustrating on this detail. You are going to, when you start making bigger maps, you have to compile them over and over and over again, spotting uh, small uh, problems. But that's part of the <laughs> that's part of the art of mapping. So change level, loading, and here it go. As you may have noticed, you probably didn't notice much of the change level, but here it is: a second room with no smoking in this area. Sign, light and stuff. And you don't really notice when you go on, do you? Well, this covers the change level. I'm Divagant. Thanks all to the guys at DC Fan, at the Caesar Zone, at Dreamcast Talk, etc. etc. Go check out the beta one of Ops on DC Fan page. I'm working on another project right now, which I have been secretly advertising for over two months, but uh, we'll get onto it. Also, if you think you're a good mopper, let me know and maybe we can work something out. Bye guys.